We're at Unit 1, Lesson 7, and we're finally adding and subtracting fractions. This is 7a. If you missed any of the previous videos from Lesson 6, you might become lost or confused. So there's links in this video's description to go back to there. To add or subtract fractions, they need to have the same denominator. If they do have the same denominator, we add their numerators together and keep the denominator that they both have. Then we reduce the fraction, sum or difference, to its lowest terms. There's a link to video 6b that shows how to reduce fractions in the description. And they are like fractions, and they're easy to add or subtract. Their denominators are the same. If they have different denominators, they are unlike fractions, and we need to find them a common denominator. Knowing our multiplication facts and multiples will help a lot, so remember, to reduce all answers to lowest terms or to convert improper fractions to mixed numbers. All right? Unless you have to write it as an improper fraction on that standard grid that we talked about. Okay? So when we have like fractions, it's pretty easy. Like fractions have the same denominator. These all have a denominator. These both have a denominator of 9, so we just add the numerator straight across. See that? We have 2 ninths plus 3 ninths. It's going to be 5 ninths. The denominator slides across. We add the numerators. Now look at this one. We have 8 thirteenths plus 9 thirteenths. They have the same denominator. They're like fractions. We add the 8 plus 9 and get a 17. But now that's improper because this numerator is so big. We can actually pull a 13 thirteenths out of this, can't we? Which is a 1 because the numerator and denominator are the same. And that's going to leave 4 thirteenths left over, so we have 1 and 4 thirteenths. Do you see how I did that? We're pulling one whole out of this as a 13 thirteenths. All right. Here's a subtraction one. We have 9 sixteenths minus 7 sixteenths, like fractions, same denominator. We just subtract going across the numerator here, and we get 2 sixteenths. And this can be reduced. 2 sixteenths, we can divide both the numerator and denominator by the same number. Remember, it has to be the same number. 2 divided by 2 is 1, and 16 divided by 2 is 8. This reduces to 1 eighth. 2 sixteenths reduces to 1 eighth. Here we have 11 21ths, and we're taking away 4 21ths. 11 take away 4 is 7. They have the same denominator, so we just do the numerator. See? Now we have 7 21ths as our answer. We can reduce this by dividing both the numerator and denominator by 7. Remember, it has to be the same number. 7 divided by 7 is 1. 21 divided by 7 is 3. We have 1 third. Okay? So for unlike fractions, we need to find a common denominator and change one or both fractions so they have the same denominator. So we don't have to change both fractions if we don't have to, you know? Sometimes we could just change one of them to match the, the second one. Unlike fractions are easier to add or subtract if they are stacked vertically. So if you're adding or subtracting unlike fractions, so this has a 5 as a denominator, this has a 3 as a denominator, it's easier to stack them because then we can do this to convert them to have common denominators. We have room to do all this, okay? So when we have 3 fifths and 2 thirds and we want to add them, we make our list of multiples for the 5 denominator. We make our list of multiples for the 3 denominator, and we find the first number that they meet at. And they can meet at 15. That's the first number they have in common. That's their first common multiple. So we write a 15 here and a 15 here, and we ask ourselves, 5 times what is 15? 5 times 3. The numerator gets jealous. It needs to be multiplied by the same amount, so 3 times 3 is 9. We have 9 fifteenths. That is an equivalent fraction to 3 fifths. We do it for this one. The 3 needs to be multiplied by 5 to become a 15, so that's what we multiply the numerator by, and we get 10 fifteenths. We add the 9 and 10 together and get a 19 fifteenths. See, now that we have common denominators, it's just like this where we're just dealing with the numerator. See, 
Now, out of this 19 fifteenths, we can pull out a 15 fifteenths as a 1. When the numerator and denominator are the same, it makes a 1, a 1 whole. And that's going to leave 4 fifteenths left over, so we have 1 and 4 fifteenths. Let's try another one. Here's a subtraction one. We have 13 fifteenths, and we want to take away 3 tenths. We make our list of 15 multiples because that's the denominator. 15 times 1 is 15. 15 times 2 is 30. 15 times 3 is 45. 15 times 4 is 60. We do it for the tens, 10, 20, 30, 40. We find their lowest common multiple. The one they have in common that is the smallest number, and we have a 30. So that's going to be our denominator. So what does 15 need to be multiplied by to be a 30? Well, a 2. So 13 wants to be multiplied by 2. That's a 26. So 13 fifteenths equivalent fraction is 26 thirtieths. 10 needs to be multiplied by 3 to become a 30. So the 3 wants to be multiplied by a 3. That's a 9. Now this is subtraction. We do 26 minus 9. We get 17 thirtieths. And that's reduced as far as it can go. Because 17 is a prime number. Okay? All right. Let's try another one. Here's an addition. We are gonna, we're going to add 3 eighths and 1 fourth. So for this case, we wrote our multiples of 8 and our multiples of 4, and we can see they can meet at 8. So he doesn't need to change at all. This is the only one that has to change. See, so sometimes one of them doesn't have to change. They can meet at that one's denominator. So he stays the same and just slides across. 4 times 2 is going to give us a denominator of 8. So 1 wants to be multiplied by 2. We have 2 eighths. Now we can add them. 3 plus 2 is 5, and we have 5 eighths. And that's reduced as far as it can go. Let's try this one. We want to add 7 eighths and 9 sixteenths. Well, when we write the multiples of 8 and 16, we see they can meet at 16. That's the smallest number they can meet at. So this one doesn't need to change. He's just going to scoot over this way and stay 9 sixteenths. We ask, what does the 8 need to be multiplied by to become 16? A 2. So 7 wants to be multiplied by 2. It becomes a 14. Now we can add them. Got to pay attention to our signs so we don't actually accidentally add when we're supposed to be subtracting or vice versa. So we're adding 14 and 9. We get a 23. Well, that's an improper fraction. That numerator is bigger than the denominator. So we can pull a 16 sixteenths out of this as a one whole. And we're going to have 7 left over. 7 sixteenths. So we have 1 and 7 sixteenths. Okay. Let's try it again. But now we have 3 add-ins. Look at that. We're going to add 2 thirds, 1 fourth, and 1 half. So the first thing we do, because we have a denominator of a 3, a 4, and a 2, and they're unlike, we list the multiples of 3 and 4 and 2, and we find the smallest number that they have in common. So the 4 and the 2 have the 8 in common, but 3 doesn't have that in common. So the only number that all three of them have in common together is the 12. So that's going to be our assigned denominator. Now we ask, what did the 3 need to do to become a 12? You need to be multiplied by 4. 2 wants to be multiplied by 4. It becomes an 8. What did 4 need to become a 12? It needed to be multiplied by 3. 1 wants to be multiplied by 3. We have 3 twelfths. What did 2 need to be to become a 12? He needed to be multiplied by 6. So 1 wants to be multiplied by 6. So see, we're multiplying all of them by a different number to get them to that 12. See? So we have 6 twelfths for 1 half. Now we can add them. We have all these like common denominators. See that? They're like fractions. We add 8 plus 3 plus 6. That's 8, 9, 10, 11. And 6 more is 17. We have 17 twelfths. We can pull a 12 twelfths out of this as one whole. And that's going to leave 5 twelfths left over. So we have 1 and 5 twelfths as our answer. See? Let's try one more. We have 11 twelfths minus 5 6. The multiples for 12, 12 times 1, 12 times 2, 12 times 3, 
and the multiples for 6, we can see the lowest number, the smallest number is a 12 that they can meet at. So that's going to be our common denominator. Well, this didn't need anything to be a 12. It already is a 12, so we're just going to slide it over. The 6 needed to be multiplied by 2 to be the 12, so 5 wanted to be multiplied by 2, and he's a 10. Now we can subtract. 11 twelfths minus 10 twelfths is 1 twelfth. Okay? All right, I hope that made sense to you. You should now be ready to do the skill focus on page 89. Okay? And our next video is going to be adding and subtracting mixed numbers. Mixed numbers are numbers like this. It's a whole number with a fraction. That's a mixed number. And we're going to be adding those, okay? If you need more help, there are links in this description to Lesson 6 in this playlist for the beginning fraction videos. And there's going to be links to the Grade 4 and Grade 5 math for adding and subtracting fractions. Okay? I hope you're having a great day. And I hope you keep trying. Don't quit. If it starts getting too hard, don't quit. Just retreat and regroup and try again, okay? I believe in you, and I'll see you next video. Bye.